Hi, everyone. This is Heather with Magnificent Mamas. We are joined here today with author Ebony. Is it McMillan? Yes, McMillan. McMillan. All right, guys, I'm going to let Ebony introduce herself. Hi, guys. I write under the name E.S. McMillan. I write a little bit of everything, but lately my heart has been in my small town romance series, um, the Allen Mill books. The really cool thing about it is that, yes, it's a series, but each book is a standalone in its own merit. So you can literally pick up any book and start and not feel lost. Um, each book focuses on a different shop and also a different couple. So they're all interconnected, but they're they're all standalones. That's awesome that you say that because I feel like so many people that write series, it's, you know, you know, an order, yeah. in a logical order or something. And I'm working on a series myself and mine is you could read it standalone, like you said. Uh-huh. all in the same universe yes i think that is so cool do you want to tell us a little more about your book sorry i didn't mean to cut you off oh, that's I was okay excited um so my books they like i said they are they all take place in a small southern town in south carolina which was inspired by the town that my grandma grew, grew up in so my books are very very heavy on family and friendship love is important too but i like to focus more on the family relationships so okay. each book focuses on a family. You're you're gonna find it very family oriented. Family is so important, especially I feel like it's not what it used to be. So how many books do you have in that series? I feel like I'm being tested like I test my kids in school. Oh I'm sorry, don't no 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 no. The main books, it's five main shops right right now, and then I have series that I'm spinning off. Actually, mm-hmm. it's two series that I'm spinning off. So one of them is going to be a trilogy and the first book is out now and it features a delivery service. And then I have a series that's kind of on the darker side. So we've got a casino and a casino boss to the bad guy and the girl who he loves. And then we've got a cop who kind of slides into the mix. That's cool. And it's awesome that you can write different like varieties, so to speak. I don't know if I'd even say genres, but those differences... If you could, you know, bring one of your characters to life for a day, which one would you bring and what would you do? I think I would have to bring Vera. You will get to meet her in my book, An Old Fashioned Love Love Story. Um, She's older, just so sweet, and she believes in love. And she makes awesome donuts, so. What would you guys do if you brought her to life for a day? I think we would go to her shop and we would just spend the day talking and baking. Okay, so if you, let's say your characters had social media, what would their posts look like? Would they be family? I think that a lot of the posts would be like trading recipes back and forth because most of the shops are food and and related. So there's a donut shop, there's a candy shop, there's also a adult toy shop. So I think all of them would be like trading different recipes back and back and forth and like planning different events and meeting up at one of the shops or at the local jazz club. Are they all friends and connected throughout each book? Yes. So you see everybody kind of dipping in 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 each of the other books. So the books that you've published, were they all together like co-author? No. Um, I have a few with different co-authors, and then the bulk of them are, are solos. Is it hard to have a co-author? No, I've been really lucky. I've found co-authors who I really, really vibe with. So we may not even have a plot in mind. We just kind of have a general I- idea, and then the story takes takes root and grows as we're going back and forth. That's awesome. I always wondered about that. So that being said, if you could co-author a book with anybody, alive or dead, who would it be? I think right now it would have to be Tracy Ball. I've read almost her entire back backlist of books. And not only is she an amazing author, but she's just one of the most realist and salt of the earth people that I've ever met. She kind of has this vibe of being like a second mom. And she is like the one person that I would love to write with and be like really creative with. If you could visit any time period, what would it be? So my grandma told me once that I was born in the wrong time era. I was born in the 1980s, but I have the heart and the soul of somebody born in the 60s. And not so much the struggle, but the 60s were all about like peace and love and how I am and who I have always been. I just want everybody to be happy and get along. 
it'd be nice if the world was like that. It really would be. Yeah, I think we'd all be better off. Yeah, it would. I mean, I feel like there's so much negativity in the world and so much not caring. It'd be awesome if people could just get along. I have found the overall author community very supportive, very understanding. I've ran into a few bad apples and a few people when it came to me trying to help authors promote themselves when I offer free promotion thinking it's a scam because there's so many scammers targeting people even in the author communities you know we all see it every day but if you take the time to look at my website you know and I do I offer these like the author interviews for free just because I'm trying to help authors get their name out there, get their books out there. You know, even if it's just one person hearing about it, to me, that's a win. Because one less person or one more person than... So I have to say that I totally and from the bottom of my heart appreciate you doing doing this. Um, I actually saw your post and I was like, oh, I can do this. And then when I realized that there was no fee involved, I was like, oh, man. And I just appreciate you taking your time to sit down and chat with me and get to know me and my book. So thank you. Yeah. It was so funny because when I first started this, like throwing around the idea for the podcast, I posted in a couple author groups that I'm in. I'm in a bunch, like writing groups and stuff like that. But I posted in a couple. And within two days, I had 200 and something people booked. And to this date, I'm at almost 600, but it's every single author I've met has been wonderful. It's been such an experience. It's, there's no words to even put into it. So it's so rewarding and I just love it. And I love every single author I've met. So what kind of advice would you give an aspiring writer? The one advice that I would give is to just keep writing. It doesn't matter if it's good. It doesn't matter if it's bad. Just write. Get it down on paper. And when you're done, we can always go back and fix it if it needs to be fixed. But just write. Do you have an area that you find to be challenging? I think recently, because I just went back to work, is finding time when I'm not exhausted to be creative. I was walking to work the other day and I had this amazing idea and I got to work and I pulled out a notebook and I just jotted everything down so I didn't and and forget. But it's like now I got to find the time to actually put pen to paper and do it. So finding time when I'm not doing lesson plans or, you know, I'm not being a mom to my four crazy kiddos or I'm not being a wife or like just finding me time again. And it's hard as a mom in general. I mean, most moms that I know and how I am in experience, like we take care of everybody else. We make sure everybody else has what they need and whatnot. And we don't think about ourselves when we're buying stuff for people. It's always about everybody else. And then it's like, oh, hey, I need to do something nice for myself or I need to take me time. Have you ever get up in the middle of the night because your brain won't stop and you have all these ideas and you need to go write them down before you forget? So I keep a notebook by my bedside on my nightstand. So I've got a stack of books and on the top of the stack of books is a notebook and it is filled with ideas. I'll get to them eventually, but they are written down so that I don't forget. Do you ever get writer's block or have moments of self-doubt? And if so, how do you handle it? These last couple of weeks, I've been gearing up for some pretty big book events. Um, I'm I just got back from Tropicon in Florida and I'm getting ready to go to Readers Take Denver. And then after that, I'm going to Beyond the Read in Ohio. And when I tell you that imposter syndrome is real, mm-hmm. like I sit there every single day, at least five times a day. And I'm like, how is this even happening? How is this my life? Like they want me, they've included me. And my husband has been really good at talking me out, out of my self doubts. Um, I, just started a new job teaching middle school math and one of my co-teachers you know she when she found out that I was an author she went out and bought my books and she's been reading them and asking all and talking to me and she's like I've read you and you're good enough to be at anybody's event and she tells me that every single day and I am so thankful for the reminders gentle and not so gentle that I deserve to be there just as much as everybody else so it's that's awesome it's a lot processing it and taking it in but I'll get it eventually. <laughs> I know my partner, she's going to be at Readers Take Denver. Ooh, tell me. At- get the Rising Star event. So stop by and see me. I will. I will talk about it when we have our team meeting later, actually. We're fine. Um, 
but she's also gonna be she's got our business cards and stuff like that so she's hoping to interact with some people while she's there too i guess i'm super excited for her just to go and experience that because that's not something i can do right now but I'd love to be able to go and go to an event like that. Are you going to be signing or are you just going to be, what are you going to be doing at Readers Take Denver? I'm signing. I'm one of the Rising Star authors, so I'll be signing books on Saturday. Still freaking out about it. Working on ways to make my cable even bigger and better and buying lots of new swag. <laughs> yes, that's important. Yeah. Do you have like a good team helping you? I have my husband. I actually met a chef who works with Nerdy Girls Book Blog, who has been amazing. We've been bouncing ideas off of each other, and we are actually teaming up for a new project that I am so excited about. And I just love that she, you know, read one of my books and fell in love and was inspired. And we've been able to create what I think is going to be the coolest thing ever. So I'm totally curious, and I'm going to be watching and paying attention for this so and i can't wait to check out your books i'm going to have to because they sound great and there's something right up my alley i hope you you know have just a wonderful experience at readers thank you i am you know one of the big draws of it is that my dad lives out out there so i'm gonna make time to go see see my dad too and then I get to go meet with all the book people and hang out on the red carpet with Lisa Renee Jones and you know just all the people and Rebecca Yaros is going to be there and Sylvia Day and I'm like oh my god that is awesome who are on my bookshelf <laughs> you're gonna see them yeah like these are people that I want to be when I grow up <laughs> when you grow up girl you're already an adult I know I know <laughs> you're already accomplishing your dream What's the most challenging scene you ever had to write and how did you tackle it? I'm a mood writer. Also, let my stories tell themselves. So I may have a general idea of what the story is going to be, but I sit down and I start and I kind of let the story take on a life of its own. The scenes that I have a really hard time doing are like death scenes and really, really emotional scenes. Because I get so engrossed in them. Like, I'll be sitting at my kitchen table writing, and there'll be tears pouring down my face. And my husband will think that, like, something, like, is wrong. Like, he'll think that somebody in my family was was hurt or somebody died or something. Yeah. But I'm like, no, I'm just writing a scene. And he'll be like, okay. Stop. But, like, those, I think, are some of my best scenes. I just re-released the book. It was originally released back in 2019, part of the candy shop. It was originally titled All Around the Sour Gummy Patch. And... I got a brand new cover and it's got a brand new title. As I was getting it ready to re-release back in January, I was rereading it and I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm bawling my eyes out. And I'm like, this is so sad. And my son walked by and he's like, but you wrote it. You know what's going to happen. I was like, I know, but it's still sad. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever written yourself or someone you know into your story? There is a little bit of ebony in every story that I write. Most of the characters in my stories are people that I've known or are inspired by people that I know. There's a character who you're going to see in a lot of the Allenville books. Her name is Mama Sandra, and she was inspired by one of the best people that I've ever known, and that's my husband's mom. Um, she was just this force of nature, and I mean that in the best way possible. She had the biggest art and she was honestly one of the best people that I, I know and she welcomed me into her family and made me one of her kids before me and my husband even got like really serious and married yeah when she passed away I wanted to find a way to kind of always keep her around and when I started writing I I just knew that she had to be a part of everything that I did and I think that her character makes everything better so you're going to see Mama Sandra in, like, everything. How do you approach world building? Allenville in itself is a world that I created. And I just basically created a world that I want it to be a part of. There's just something about a small town where everybody knows each other. Everybody can walk into somebody's house without having the cops called. And then another thing, too, my grandma growing up always used to say I confused her all the time because I was a city girl with a country girl heart. I always wanted to live in a small town. I always wanted that that sense of community and family. So I didn't really have that, so I created it. How would you say you handle the challenges of balancing life, work, writing, making time for you? I always come last on the total pole. Everything else 
is so much more important. I need to make sure that everybody else is good before I'm good. As far as my writing goes, I like to ride a deadline like I'm riding a horse. So I'm hanging on for dear life. <laughs> In the end, it's all going to work, work out. I just have to have faith that I'm going to get through it. So I just got to keep going. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add about writing or your book or anything in general? I honestly just want people, I, I never got into writing for the money. Like I know that a lot of people write to sell books and yes, I would love to sell a million books, but that's not what my ultimate goal is. My ultimate goal is to give you guys a story that makes you feel something. Whether you love it or hate it, I just want you to come into my world for a little bit and get to know know me. That's what my ultimate goal is because I do, like I said, I put a lot of me into my book. So I just want you to come into my little happy, happy place and get to know me and hang out with me for, for a little bit. I can't wait to check out your books, honestly. I'm so excited. Um... It was such a pleasure getting to meet you. And I really do hope that you take a trip down to Allenville and meet Mama Sandra and Miss V and Merle and Ada and all my characters and stay for some sweet tea and some donuts. <laughs> I'm going to have to add that to my list of books that I want to read. It's been a pleasure and you are just such a sweetheart. Thank you. It's been wonderful.